We have a veteran of the, um, uh, the Innerfest Unbound stage uh, back from London for the third year running. We have Rich Preston of BBC News and his panel, The Future of Mobility. Please put your hands together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for sticking with us. Uh, we're going to discuss the future of mobility and in particular how we move people around modern cities. I've got three experts uh, with me who I'm sure will have fascinating insights to share. Jan, Robert. Peter yeah. and Kaho. Um, and I just want to dive straight in and throw a question to all of you. You know, the internal combustion engine happened, you know, 100 years or so ago and we've not really seen a big transport revolution since. Are we seeing the next big transport revolution on the horizon? Jan. Um, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Happy to be here today with you. Uh, mobility and transportation is a big, big change in the last three years and even more last uh, 12 months, I would say. Many, many new solutions uh, showing up. Scooters, e-scooters, helicopter, uh, uh, autonomous vehicle. And the quantity of money invested in that industry, in that topic, is increasing um, and it's very fantastic. So there is a momentum that we see for both investors, entrepreneurs, city, and corporate. So I think that with FinTech, the mobility business is really a hit right now. Peter, what's your take? Yeah, I definitely think that uh, there is some type of revolution ongoing in the uh, mobility sector. And I think there are some drivers enabling that. So uh, one of them is uh, a socio-demographic one. Um, to take it uh, with a practical example, um, in 1990 in Jakarta, for example, you had roughly 8 million people living. Um, today it's roughly 10.5 million. 2040 we expect to have 14 million people. So more and more people, urbanization is going on, um, things are getting more and more dense, and that leads to new problems and to new challenges also on infrastructure level. And with new technologies, so battery technology, connectivity technology, um, I think there's a bunch of new chances for new business uh, to, to solve that. Kaho, you're from ST Engineering. You particularly work with governments and companies looking at cities and how we move people around cities. Do you see the next big revolution on the horizon? Yeah. Okay, so maybe some quick background on uh, ST Engineering first and what we do in this space and why we are interested in this space. So for those of you who know us, uh, ST Engineering started off as a defense company uh, about 50 plus years ago. Uh, we have evolved since then, uh, and today we are a global technology, defense, and engineering group uh, spanning uh, over 100 countries where we have operations and people. Uh, and we are in a wide suite of uh, businesses, including aerospace, uh, marine, electronics, and land systems. One of the big areas that we are focused on as a business going forward is, and in the commercial space, is in the, areas, in the area of helping cities solve the urban challenges that, uh, that uh, Peter mentioned, right? Uh, we all know all the major cities around the world face the same challenges in congestions, con traffic congestion, in security, in managing sustainab sustainability for the resources that they have. Uh, we are doing a lot of that, both in Singapore and we do, and we we are pushing, try and we are pushing that business more and more outside of Singapore. And the mobility space, especially, is one of the biggest problem of of any major city, right? Uh, one report puts the amount of uh, cost globally of traffic congestion at some, at, in the region of about 460 billion US dollars in 2017. And it is expected to continue to accelerate and double to about 900 billion uh, by 2030, right? So that is a huge problem. And um, it is one of, the, one of the areas that we are doing a lot of work uh, in coming in, in trying to come up with solutions to help, help cities, whether it is intelligent traffic solutions. Uh, we have a wide suite of uh, smart rail solutions, uh, real electronic solutions. Um, but I think with the advent of uh, more and more EVs, AVs, I think that will 
further add on to the kind of tools that we have to try and help cities solve these problems. I just want to pick up on what you say about cities because, you know, it's not just the technology and the transportation themselves. There does need to be infrastructure in the cities. Yeah. And, you know, that's maybe easy in Los Angeles or Singapore where you've got wide streets and there's not huge overpopulation. What about in cities like London or Rome or Paris? Can you do this anywhere? Or is there only a, a few cities this will work in? No, that's, that's, that's a good point. Um, actually, when you, look at the, when you look at the advancement of uh, AVs and EVs and smart mobility, actually on the technology side, uh, that is, it is moving very, very fast. Right? Um, I was at a conference uh, two days ago where uh, th there was a sharing of, you know, for EVs, for example, the cost of batteries are coming down at such a fast rate that EV cars will be cheaper than your combustion engine cars in a couple of years' time. And um, so that's a big turning point, right? On the AV side, there's a lot of, uh, there is a lot of obviously, a lot of, a lot of research and a lot of trials going on. Uh, in California alone, there are more than 50 um, companies with licenses to be testing, testing AVs. And Waymo themselves, just Waymo, a company Waymo, uh, announced in October last year that they have crossed 10 million miles in terms of A-B testing. So on the technology side, I think uh, it's moving very, very fast. But I think that the, or we think as, as engineering, that the bigger issue is not so much how fast technology moves. It is this issue of infrastructure, right? To operationalize um, EV, AV fleets, uh, you will take Sometimes not because of technology, but because of, the, of the, all the surrounding issues, right? Issues such as social acceptance, issues such as infrastructure, charging infrastructure, issues such as, you know, how you think about insurance in the world of EVs and AVs, um, and, and so on and so on. And build new business models, especially in new players in the in shared mobility space and so on. So I think that's... That's the big problem that, that, that cities need to solve. How do you put in place um, an ability for the ecosystem, for different players to come together to try and solve all these uh, infrastructure uh, and, and system solutions uh, together? And, and that's why uh, at, we, we feel that, you know, in terms, of the, uh, in terms of where there might be some earlier wins is in areas where there could be more controlled environment. So we are, we are doing a lot of work in AV buses, for example, because that's an area where you have controlled lanes, you have fixed routes, you have certainty as to when you can bring the bus back for charging. So that, that and, and with those, uh, with the, that kind of systems, you can then be able to start to try out some of these, uh, you know, some of these solutions before it becomes mess. Jan, when we talk about mobility, we're not just talking about cars and buses. Tell us about some of the startups that you work with. Okay, so um, we really believe um, that uh, bikes, scooters, daily mobility for individuals is also very important. VID is both investor and accelerator. We have four offices, uh, Paris, Berlin, San Francisco, and Singapore and we have a portfolio of uh, more than 20 startups. Among them, uh, we have seven of them in the daily soft mobility. Bikes, scooters that you can buy, you can share. For instance, we are the main uh, shareholder of Smooth. Smooth is operating the bike sharing system in Paris, Moscow, Vancouver, etc., etc. So, big leader. And 50% of the bikes in Paris are e-bikes. And we're talking about more than 100,000 rides per day. So it's very a massive impact. And it's very complementary to public transport or private cars. Two examples also. We are an important shareholder of Drivey, who just merged with GetAround. So a car sharing company operating in North America and Europe. And it's a change on the way you, you move on the individual's uh, point of view because you don't need or less to own your own car. So you can really share cars and it costs so much to have your car, own car that sharing a car now with 
good platform like Drivey is a real solution. Last example, uh, one of the company you have is XI. XI is a platform for connected vehicle. With that, you can easily know what is the best uh, way to use your car, predictive maintenance, um, uh, insurance, optimize, etc., etc. So what I'm saying is uh, uh, transportation should not be seen as a series of means of transportation, but as a global system, and you have to operate everything together from the point of view of both the individual and the city. Yeah. It feels to me as a consumer, like most of the personal mobility methods, whether it's bikes or scooters, they tend to be startups. Is that true? Are we seeing the big companies get involved in this sector? In, in the region, you mean? Uh, across Europe, across the, the US, it's, it feels like the, the, the scooters, the ride-hailing apps, it's all startups. We're not really seeing big companies get involved. Is that fair? Uh, Lime has strong collection with uh, uh, Uber and uh, also Lyft also as a solution. So I, we, we can say that this is a big solution. It's more developed in America or uh, now in uh, Europe, but it's coming step by step. And we are shoulder for Gojek. And we know Grab also very well. And we know that they are looking at uh, those solution as a continuum of what they offer. And what is interesting here is that uh, um, the ecosystem in Singapore and in Southeast Asia is changing rapidly. So more and more, because of companies like Gojek, the landscape has changed a lot. They have a huge impact. And because you have big players like these two, it's becoming more and more a full ecosystem and young startups are going to follow the path of those big players. So I think that in the mobility field, it's going to be a lot of changes in this region too. Peter, taking things off the street, tell us about Volocopter. Yeah, sure. Um, Volocopter is a company that is based in Germany, uh, one hour south of Frankfurt. And um, the company started in 2011. And I like the story how it all started. Um, it was our founder who bought a toy drone for his son and brought that home and uh, saw how he was playing with that. And then he thought, why did nobody actually build that in big to lift off a person? So he had some savings and um, bought some batteries and some propellers. And he simply uh, built up a prototype and lifted off. So. Um, and that was uh, also recorded on a video in 2011. This video went viral, and uh, after one week, I think they had one million clicks on that video on YouTube. So, and uh, there were a lot of calls coming in. Everybody wanted to learn more. How did you guys do that? Because it's actually some kind of the dream of flying that uh, seemed to be become true. So uh, in 2016, we lifted off for the first time in Germany with a full-size prototype with a permit to fly from German aviation authorities. So we were testing already a, a, a longer time, but we thought it would be very relevant if we lift off with a permit to fly. So, and uh, what we want to become is an autonomous air taxi service in mega cities like Paris, Singapore, Dubai, Jakarta, New York, and um, this is about to come very soon. Really, is it? Is it actually, I mean, your, your website says we want to realize the dreams of humans flying. Do you actually think we can do this? I mean, if you, if you sim simply look at the achievements that already have been uh, shared also um, publicly. So in 2017, we actually took off in Dubai, in the city landscape, fully autonomously. So um, the vehicle was flying uh, along a GPS uh, uh, waypoint path, and there was no human interaction with that. So, um, and at the moment, there are roughly 150 companies out there in the world working on that eVTEL technology, and um, both corporates and startups. And we are convinced that it's uh, nothing that has to do with, okay, let's wait 20 more years. It's uh, coming very soon. So I would assume like three years, four years, then we have commercial operations. 
Tell us a bit about the regulation around this, around this and the, the kind of obstacles that you have to push through. Yeah. So um, the vehicle has uh, some technical limitations um, and a lot of possibilities. So limitations means at this point in time, with current battery technology, we can fly a route, for example, from Heathrow Airport to London city center. I don't know, probably some also from the people here have already tried that. And on a bad day, that can uh, cost you two and a half hours with a taxi. So with today's battery technology, we can already do this connection in 20 minutes. So, um, but the range is up to 30 kilometers with a speed of 70 to 100 kilometers per hour. And um, that is actually what we can already do today. What are the limitations? Are there some cities where you just couldn't do this? Like New York, for example, where there's lots of helicopters buzzing around, or busy cities like London or Paris? Yeah. I think limitations come from different sides. Uh, one is uh, the regulatory um, environment. So um, it's, it's a new topic, and that has to be kind of developed also from regulatory side. And I'm actually very happy to have uh, uh, guys like Jan um, um, who are working on an ecosystem, also thinking of the last mile problem, or SD yep. engineering, working on airspace integration with technologies like Drohub. It's uh, quite exciting that there's so much going on, and this is really necessary because it's not one company that can overcome limitations. It's uh, actually an, uh, an industry or a whole ecosystem that needs to overcome that. And with personal private helicopters, what are the environmental issues? Are there any environmental issues? I mean, the idea of hundreds of private helicopters buzzing around the sky surely rings some alarm bells. Yeah. So uh, one of the, the issues uh, that a helicopter uh, has is uh, the, the noise. So you have different types of rotors, so a, a, a main rotor, a back rotor, and the noise is uh, spread around a whole frequency set. And this is uh, for the subjective uh, person, it, it can be very, very loud. So the Volocopter has 18 rotors, and um, there's um, no other moving parts beside of the rotors. So the noise is very, very low compared to a helicopter. And in terms of environmental issues, I mean, we have no combustion engine. We have uh, only battery-powered motors. So we actually produce in-flight zero emission. Zero emissions. In-flight. That's wow. pretty impressive. Very Jan, good. I want to come back to you. Um, we've talked about cars. We've talked about helicopters. You've talked about scooters and bikes. What's a good balance in a modern city? How, how many of these different elements should be involved there? It, it, it's a key topic. And I, I would say there is uh, two ways to answer. First, we really believe in um, partnership. We don't think that uh, uh, players, big or small, should just start and do their business and consider more or less the rules. We consider that it should be a, a discussion between local authorities, corporate, uh, startups, um, and also research or uh, the universities. And we, we think that uh, the way to do that is really to have a long-term planification, because if you don't work on the infrastructure, you're not going to change the way that people are going to use the transportation. To give you an example, for bikes, if you don't have dedicated lines, the part of usage will never be above 5%. In northern city in Europe, uh, Scandinavia, Germany, uh, Belgium, you have 30 to 50% of transportation done by bikes. Why? Because the city at least the centers are organized for that. So if you want to do that, you need to have a long-term planification. That's true in Singapore, too. And second part is you need also to work on short term by testing things, so to develop experimentation. This is why we created a startup challenge for mobility recently, and we announced uh, tonight the finalists and the winners for Asia. Uh, because we need to create um, that ecosystem for entrepreneurs 
to have the confidence to start ideas and projects, and they know that they will find partners to invest, but they will find partners also to test their solution. So we have a discussion with LTA in Singapore, with uh, Transport for London, with San Francisco, because they trust us as a trustful partner to connect them, not just for us to win something, but a win-win situation because we respect their point of view and we respect also the fact that it should be a global partnership. Gaho, I want to yep. finish up with you. You've got a good holistic view of the interaction between the different parts of this moving machine. Yep. What do governments need to do? What, what do they need to do more of to make sure that the modern city continues to move forward? Okay. So before I touch on that, I just want to just follow on on a point that you asked about, you know, the split of fleets. And we are seeing all these interesting new models of shared services, uh, shared mobility, you're seeing helicopter with, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, taking to the air, right? So a lot of new, new interesting ideas and a lot of new interesting modes of transport. And to me, it's the question about, you know, the split is less around, you know, what is going to take off, what is not going to take off in the future. It's more around how do you make all these services start to work together? Because if you take a step back, ultimately the big problem for cities again is congestion, right? Congestion costs money. Congestion is a big problem that all major cities need to solve. And in order to solve the congestion problem, actually, ultimately, you need to make sure that people go back to taking mass public transport, right? Individual cars, individual AVs will be very flexible, very convenient, but you have everybody on shared or on AV cars in the streets, you'll be a lot jammed, you know, traffic will be terrible, that won't be a very pleasant experience. So ultimately, it's about how you create a system where you allow someone to step out of his house, there's an AV, you know, minibus or AV car or AV e-scooter waiting for him to bring him to the nearest train station. He can, he reached the train station at the time when the train is about to leave and he goes to his office in town and when he reaches the, the, you know, the, the train station in, in, in town, there is then an e-scooter or an AV car to bring him to the doorstep of his office. And how do you think about how cities pull all these systems together is that big problem to be solved. In addition to all the other infrastructure issues that we talked about, uh, how do you make sure that the, the, the charging grid can support the kind of EVs, the kind of cars, the kind of vehicles that we're going to put in place? How do you make sure that the insurance you know, schemes take in into account AVs? You know, when an AV car knocks into a, a person-driven car and mixed traffic is going to be here for a long time, even when AV cars come in, who, who, is, it, you know, who is at fault, who takes care of insurance? There are many, many issues to be solved. So I think back to the question that you have for me, which is, what, what is what's the role of government? I think certainly the role of, role of government is important to, to, be, to be the platform, to be the facilitator, to try and put some of this, uh, to allow industries to work together, to put some of these solutions into place. And I guess, you know, the, what, what the EDB and LTA has done in Singapore with the call for the CFC for some of these autonomous bus uh, trials that are upcoming. That's, that's a great example of uh, government leading the way to try and put in place some of these uh, platforms for industry to come together to work. But it's also incumbent ultimately on private sector companies to try and use these opportunities to come, and s come together and see how we can work together with various elements, various partners within this space and come up with a solution. So at ST Engineering, for example, we are quite keen on working on to, 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 um, to be part of the CFC. We have already been uh, doing AV bus trials. As I mentioned earlier, we think that AV buses will be the ones that may, may hit the market earlier. So we have been doing uh, autonomous mobility on demand vehicles in Gardens by the Bay. Uh, that stopped in 2016. We currently have AV bus trials ongoing in uh, Sentosa and uh, on Jurong Island. Uh, and we continue to want to work with a lot of the ecosystem partners. We are working with OEMs, uh, bus, EV bus makers, to see how we can put our AV kit onto their buses and put this together. We are working with the public service uh, operators to see in the, in the new world of uh, shared mobility uh, with autonomous buses and autonomous cars, how do they, what role do they play? 
Uh, we are also working in startups. So I, we've uh, got a corporate venture fund that invests in startups in the spaces that we are in. Uh, and we have invested in two startups that are in, in this space that we are in, right? So one is uh, a company, Right OS, in, based in San Francisco that does mobility on demand as a platform, right? Uh, because ultimately, you know, that scenario I plain, that I painted, you want to have many operators of fleets, but you want them to be able to be on the same platform that can talk to each other so that you know when the train will arrive so that you want to be at the train station at the right time with your, with your car. Um, we also have invested in a, a company called uh, SafeRight that does uh, cybersecurity for, ve for vehicular platforms. And again, that is a huge issue, right? So once you have more and more uh, AVs, and not even just AVs, e connected EVs, right? Uh, once you have connected cars, uh, cybersecurity becomes a big issue. So we invested in a company that does cybersecurity for, um, for vehicles, and we are incorporating them in our, in our, 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 our plan. So ultimately, I will just end off by saying, I think ultimately this is a system issue, as we have talked a lot about. I think it takes all players within the ecosystem to work together to try and solve the problems to, to try and you know, get this right. Thank you. And on that note, that's us out of time. Jan, Peter, Kahu, thank you very much for joining me on stage. Thank you for thank joining you, us. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you again next year.